Hey everyone, welcome to another video. I'm continuing my series of these kind of loose florals as part of my World Watercolor Month challenge to myself. And <laughs> of course, true to form, I think I have painted um, less in watercolors during July than I have in <laughs> every other month <laughs> this year. Um, yeah, just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I don't have a lot of time by myself, home alone, and I really feel um, that I enjoy just sitting down and painting when I know I won't be interrupted. But I think I'll have to let that fantasy go because uh, my kids are going to be home till September. So yeah, I'll have to find a way uh, around <laughs> my issues. <laughs> But I have uh, continued to paint as part of this challenge. And yeah, the other thing is that I have just finished editing and recording and preparing my new watercolor class called Intuitive Painting in Watercolor. Class officially starts July 12th and I'm doing a giveaway on my channel. So go to that video and leave a comment and you'll get a chance to win a spot in the class. I'm super excited about it. But my process is that after I finish, I wrap up a class. I kind of feel a little bit drained and um, most of the time I go into a phase of learning and that's where I am now, but I'm kind of more focused now on just learning to sketch mostly people and um, hopefully also a little bit uh, more bodies. I've done more, I've studied more how to sketch faces and I feel like I need to improve my um, sketching bodies skills. So that's kind of where I am uh, just dabbling in that, but I'm still really enjoying this challenge. And I think today's video is a really great example of what uh, a, an opportunity it is to do something like this. So today's focused color is shell pink. That's where I started. I have the um, Shinhan Pass hybrid watercolor gouache type of color. I don't know, it just behaves like watercolor. But this particular color is, you can see it's just this really beautiful, um, a little bit opaque, pale pink. It's lovely. And if you like this kind of color, I highly recommend trying it. And particularly the Shinhan Pass um, hybrid colors are extremely affordable and one tube will last you years and years. So the first decision was which colors do I want to pair this with? And I decided to go for more earthy tones. So I picked a few colors from my palette. The one I mixed it with, the shell pink, is called Hematite Violet from Daniel Smith. And it's actually a really beautiful color that I only have a half pan of, which means I will have to <laughs> buy a tube soon. Just because I really, really like it. It's, yeah, it's my kind of a neutral color and it has this lovely granulation. So this is where things started to get really interesting. And I absolutely love the... Um, uh, potential in this page. Uh, it's just definitely so many things I want to explore. So the whole thing of backgrounds and watercolor, it's, I don't know, it's kind of challenging just because of the nature of watercolors, right? Because they are transparent and uh, it can get a little bit tricky. But here I used more techniques that you see in you know, acrylics and even oils. And I just went around the flowers. I really, you know, this is this is the point of sketchbooks. I didn't fuss too much about the um, composition here. I just painted these two flowers and then I went around them. And when I was uh, picking a color for the background, I wanted kind of maximum drama with minimum effort. So I went with a complementary color and I figured I couldn't find my color wheel, <laughs> but I figured for a pink, like a soft pink, a soft warm pink, something like a green would work well. 
I think maybe I could have gone a little bit more minty. I don't know, I'll try. I think the best way to choose a good complementary would just be to mix those two colors you want to use and see how they neutralize each other. I'm pretty sure that a turquoise would have been a bit more neutral, but I also mixed it with a little bit of white. I wanted a really light color here. And now I'm adding, this was such a great addition. So wait, the uh, the kind of that green gold is yellow green, I think it's called. Uh, I have it in my palette. I think the one I have is by Van Gogh. And it's just, you know, it's like a green gold type of color. I think every brand makes them. Uh, I really enjoy using them. And that's the one I picked here. But then the dark one is is a newer edition. It's a color called Zoocyte, I want to say. And um, I, um, my lovely friend Eva bought the tube and I got to fill <laughs> a pen <laughs> of it. And it's a really beautiful green. Yes, you heard me say it. It's a, <laughs> it's this really, it's kind of like a perline green, I would say. Only heavy, heavily granulating or it has a really strong granulation which uh, makes it much much better to perline green in my book i honestly can't remember if perline green um, granulates i don't remember that it does or if it does it wasn't very significant but this one as you will see at the end i'll show you a close-up it's so good so this was just really really fun and here my um, challenge kind of in this particular um, spread was to add detail and yeah some contrast and some detail I didn't really know or wanted to I can't remember um, I didn't really want to add more watercolor here um, I think I just wasn't sure which colors to use. I may go back in and add just a little bit more because there's not a lot of contrast here. But mostly I just decided to add some sketchy lines with pencils. And it took me a while to find the colors that I wanted. Um, at the end, as usual for me, Prismacolor, you know, saved the day. I don't know what it is about those pencils. You can find a lot of videos about them. I've mentioned this in the past. I don't think they are, you know, as high quality as say the polychromos, but I find their color range to be just perfect for me personally. And whenever I need a color, somehow I find it in their range. I also have a full set of the polychromos and I don't know, there's just something about it, about the Prisma colors that uh, just work better for me personally. Um, they have also their disadvantages, but for my way of using them, where color is important, and usually I only scribble, I don't build layers and layers. Uh, I don't need that like blend that um, is, you know, better done with uh, oil pencils like the Polychromos, but. Um, yeah, for my purposes, they work really well. So I'm just trying now to find, this was kind of the trying different things till I got it right. And I tested and tested and tested colors. I find for me, it is really worth it to fight my natural impatient tendencies and take my time and go through some options until I find the perfect color you know, to me. <laughs> There's no right or wrong answer here. So there I am trying to find, I wanted a dark color, but I wanted it to have, I guess, a little bit of that uh, muted purple kind of tone to it that would work well with my color scheme. And a lot of the pencils were either just like too brown, too gray. I didn't want anything um, kind of blue or gray. I really wanted it to be more a uh, purpley type of muted color. So I searched and searched and eventually I found the answer. I think I'll show you a close up of that pencil. <laughs> Finally, the one. Um, let's see what the color name is. It is 
black raspberry. Sorry, that was a bit fast. It's black raspberry. And yeah, as the color suggests, it's just this beautiful, deep, kind of somewhat muted um, raspberry color. So like a, a black and a grape or violet color. Really lovely. And I'm using that to add here contrast. Uh, you could use watercolors, of course, but I don't know. I was in the pencil mood. I love using pencils with my watercolors. It's, it's really kind of where I'm at these days. You will rarely find me uh, painting only with watercolors. So yeah, it's just a, such a fun way of adding detail. It might be something not super conventional, definitely not uh, amongst more um, purist watercolorists. Is that a word? I don't know. But I subscribe to the, you know, do whatever you like kind of school. And <laughs> this is what I'm loving. And I love the potential here. I think this is such a great start of something for me. So this kind of background, I love that in other mediums, adding that lighter, um, kind of block of color as a background and I think it's something that I will have to explore more as I go forward. I have all kinds of ideas and this journal is such a great um, place to, you know, test them and see what I like. So I really uh, loved those almost it looks almost like handwriting lines that I added to the top flower it kind of gives it definition without adding you know a lot of like layers of paint it just looks interesting it looks sketchy and it serves the purpose um, of you know just giving it a bit more definition I probably could have gone with a bit of darker shade and that would have given me a uh, higher contrast so uh, yeah another thing to pay attention to and explore I wanted also to add some splatters. This is such an easy way to add detail to your work without actually having to do anything or know anything besides how to splatter paint. And that's kind of it. I did speed this up a little bit. This probably took me around 20 minutes. Uh, most of the <laughs> time was spent <laughs> searching for the perfect pencil colors. Let's all take a close look and appreciate the beauty of the zoazite and also the mixture with the hematite violet i think is just lovely so the take-home message for the day is free your mind and the rest will follow right <laughs> i hope you enjoyed this i'll see you in another video tomorrow bye